Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you a new tool that allows us to test our Jetpack Compose UI automatically without us needing to write any test cases. And that new tool isn't actually just a random new tool. No, it's a tool that Google just released and announced during the yearly event Google I.O. And in fact, what it's useful for is for so-called screenshot testing. So normally when we want to test our app's UI, the way we do this is we first of all need to write a test case for that. So we need to write some code that first of all sets up the UI we want to test. We then simulate some kind of user actions like a button click, like scrolling somewhere, or basically what we want to test. And then we need to run some assertions on what happened after that user interaction to check if the outcome is expected or not. And this whole workflow is what we need to write manually for a UI test. However, with screenshot tests, all that is not necessary because these types of tests work differently. And in fact, there are already tools on Android to do this. For example, RoboRatsy is a very popular tool to do screenshot testing, which is honestly also much more mature at this point. But I really like to make this video about the new official tool from Google, which is specifically designed for Compose because it is in the end an official tool. And once things become stable, I would personally always prefer an official library, an official tool, which is backed by a company that can throw a lot of money into that tool compared with a third party tool. Well, that's just my personal view. So how does screenshot testing actually work? You can see I have opened a little Compose UI. This is in fact the login screen for my just released Essentials course in Android. And this is the UI we now want to test with a screenshot test. The way a screenshot test now works is as the name says, it will take a screenshot of our screen, so of this UI. And then when we work on this UI and we maybe change something, we maybe remove the button or do something, then the screenshot testing framework will take or initially take a screenshot as a reference, which it will then compare with future screenshots. And the framework is then able to tell differences between both images. So between the reference screenshot, which was initially taken for the correct UI, and the newly taken screenshot where we potentially made some changes. And if the newly made screenshot differs from the reference screenshot, then we know that there is some kind of issue. And all that does not require any type of custom test setup. So obviously we need to set up this framework in this library, but we don't need to write a test case. And before I show you how we can set this up, I just also want to give you a little disclaimer uh, that this doesn't mean you should replace all your apps UI tests with screenshot tests. No, they are actually just an add on to your existing UI test suite. So it's just something you can use in order to test your app's UI, but not something you should solely rely on. Something screenshot tests are actually better at is for example, testing images. So if images are correctly displayed because that was always quite hard with the normal Compose UI testing framework or with UI testing frameworks in general, because it's hard to assert that an image looks like something. But with a screenshot, that image looks exactly as on the screenshot. But let's now take a look at how we can implement this new tool. You can, but you don't have to follow along here. I really just want to give you a very first preview of this new library. I'm pretty sure it will change in future because it just got into alpha. We need to opt into a lot of experimental stuff here, or just that all of you have a first impression of this tool and which direction it will go into. I wanted to make this video. So here in Android Studio, I'm actually not inside of the stable Android Studio, but we have to use Android Studio Canary at this point, which is uh, Koala, because this tool relies on Gradle 8.5.0, I think, which does not run on the stable Android Studio version at this point, but only on uh, the Canary version. Once we created a new project here in Android Studio and we want to make this tool work, you need to go to your version catalog and actually add your screenshot testing library or Gradle plugin rather. So I will just paste the version here. That is the screenshot version, which is, you can see very early in alpha right now because it just got released during Google I.O. And then we want to scroll down to plugins, so to our Gradle plugins and paste this screenshot Gradle plugin, which refers to our screenshot version. We can then hit sync now. And the next step is then to go to our Gradle properties file, because here we need to opt into an experimental flag. So let's open that one, scroll down here, and we want to write android.experimental.enable screenshot test. And we set that to true. We can then copy this, so this flag name, and actually also add this to our build.gradle module app file. So let's open that, because in here we also need this flag somewhere in this Android block. We can we can just add this at the very bottom here, for example, where we say experimental properties. And in here, we paste our just copied flag, and we also set this to true here. Furthermore, we want to add our Gradle plugin, of course. So under plugins in our app level Gradle file, we want to use alias to refer to our version catalog, lips plugins, 
and we add the screenshot plugin. Then we can hit sync now and hopefully we don't get any issues or we do get an issue. Fail to apply a uh, plugin, compose screenshot. Let's take a look at the issue we are getting. Please enable screenshot test source at first to apply the screenshot test plugin. Um, so it seems like uh, we actually did add this flag here, but it seems like we maybe need to sync this before we add the plugin. So let's uncomment this for now. Sync this again. Yes, now it's successful. Uncomment this, sync again. And no, we still get this issue. Did I maybe have a typo here? Enable screenshot test. Let's actually just copy exactly that. Oh, seems like there was a typo. I typed enabled screenshot test, but it should be enable screenshot test. Um, okay. And then we also need to adjust this here. Enable screenshot test. Try that again. And now <laughs> we get a compose Kotlin Gradle issue, which hints us to update our Gradle version. Also a lot of Gradle conflicts, as you can see here. Let's go to our version catalog. I'll enter on this Kotlin version and change this to the most recent version. And then we also need to change the Compose Compiler version, which we can do here in our Gradle file. This one needs to be 1.5.13 for the Kotlin version 1.9.23. Let's sync this again. And hopefully, yes, now we get a successful sync. One more thing we now need in our Gradle file is we need the Compose UI tooling dependency. So the dependency that um, deals with the Compose preview. Mm, this one here, um, actually without the preview, but just uh, this one here I'm actually looking for. We need to enable that for our new screenshot test source set. So that is how this new plugin works. It will generate a new source set. So a source set is really just, if we switch to the project view, what we have here inside of our source folder. So Android test would be a source set which includes all of our instrumented tests. So those tests that rely on Android resources, UI tests, so the normal UI tests. Then we have the unit test source set, which includes our JVM unit tests. So those tests that run purely on the JVM. So normally just uh, unit tests. And we have our main source set, which contains the actual production code. This new plugin now works with a new source set in which we put all of our screenshot tests. And for this source set, we can now add a screenshot test implementation here where we refer to lips um, Android X UI dot tooling. So we need to add this dependency to this new source set, sync now, and then we can create the source set and finally get started with screenshot testing. So here in uh, source or is it app, we want to create a new folder and you can see it already suggests us different types of source sets we can create or subfolders of existing source sets. And we want to type screenshot test. And there you go. Here we can already see the source set. I want to create the source screenshot test slash Kotlin folder. And there we go. We just created a new source set in which we can now put our previews. So a new Kotlin file in there where we say previews, make the normal file. And all previews we now put inside of the screenshot test source set will be considered for screenshot testing. So the Compose screenshot testing framework will go over all these previews, take a screenshot of each of them as a reference when we run a specific Gradle task, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we can verify these reference screenshots with the current UI by running another Gradle task. So by just going to our login screen, so the UI we want to test in this little sample, we scroll down to where we define the preview, which will just a, a normal preview in this case. You can follow along with a little button or so. You don't need to have this exact UI. It's really just to have some kind of demo project. I want to copy this preview, go to previews, paste this in here. And now since this preview function is inside our screenshot test source set, the uh, screenshot testing plugin will find it and take a screenshot. How do we accomplish that? For that, as I said, we need to run a specific Gradle task to uh, tell our screenshot testing framework, hey, I want to take a screenshot and we can run a custom Gradle task by opening our terminal down here. Let's do this. And we can say uh, dot slash Gradle W, so our Gradle wrapper, which is used to run Gradle tasks. And the task going to run is update debug screenshot test. Let's do that. We run this here. It'll take a moment. It will, of course, build the project. And then we should hopefully get a successful build. And yes, we do get a successful build. You can see it built successful. So where do we now find the screenshot? Because it will obviously need to be saved somewhere. Uh, we can find this in this new debug source set, which you can find here. So if we open this folder, then here is a new PNG file. And if we open that, 
then there is our reference screenshot. So that was now automatically taken by the new framework. And this will now be the reference UI all future tests will be tested against. And if you want to update this reference UI, then you need to run this Gradle task again. But let's say we now want to verify that our UI still works as expected. It looks as expected. Um, so our login screen here, the real UI. And then we can run the same Gradle task, but we need to swap out update with validate. And if we run that, wait a little moment until a Gradle was building, you can see build successful. So that already tells us that the test was successful. We can also find the generated test results here in our build folder. We're going to test results. And here we have our previous KT XM alpha that contains these test results. You can see we have uh, one tests and that was run and there were zero failures, so that test was successful. And uh, in fact, that was our login screen preview. But let's of course now also test if we break something in our code, because that is what we want to catch with automated tests. Let's go to our login screen and let's say that maybe we change something in our default state. Maybe by default we say that we can log in. And that would result in our button being enabled by default, even though we haven't yet typed anything inside of our text fields. So this is definitely a state that should be invalid. So we intentionally broke our code at this point. And if we now rerun this test, so we again now run validate debug screenshot test. So don't run update again, since then it will take this new UI as a reference screenshot. But we want to validate this new UI with the reference screenshot taken previously. So with this one, uh, no, with this one here, where the button is still grayed out because that is how it should look like. If we run this, wait a little moment, then you can see now the build failed because we had a failing test. You can see one test completed, one failed, and we will then also see this here in our newly generated test result. We see the actual error that happened and that we also had one failure. And of course, the more previews you add to your previous file, the more tests this framework will also run. So I think this is pretty promising. Again, it's of course still in a very early stage. You need to opt into experimental APIs. So at this point, I would not throw uh, these typical screenshot testing libraries like RoboRazzi out of your production apps, but I would rather wait for this one to be uh, stable. And especially what I'm looking for is that we also get some kind of visualization of these results, which uh, there doesn't seem to be at this point because I don't want to read through an XML file in order to understand my test results. Or even better, that we get some kind of JUnit integration here, um, that we have a UI directly inside of Android Studio that tells us, hey, these tests actually were run, and these failed, these succeeded, and these are the reasons why they failed. And also, what would be very helpful, maybe I'm missing something, and this already exists, um, but something that would be helpful is to, that the framework also generates a screenshot with the differences, so that we can actually take a look at which part of the UI now looks different compared to the reference screenshot. I'm not sure what this binary data here is actually for. So we have an additional folder with the binary data in this test results folder, but I don't know what this is for and how we can really use this. Maybe I'm missing something here uh, in case I do, then please let me know that in the comments. But other than that, the last thing that I can share here is that I'm still looking for a few participants who want to start being mentored one-to-one -one by me starting from May 31st because I'm uh, launching a new round of my 10-week Android mentorship program. So if you want to work with me together very closely, you want to get feedback on all your code, then click the first link in this description and apply to this program. And if you seem to be fit, we will hop into a call together discussing all the details. And if then everything fits again, we will make it fix. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week and see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.